Hi everyone, it's Seymour. It's been a week since I've arrived at Zuckerman and I'm ready to show the first thing I learned. So this week I'm showing off what I've learned about tuning a harpsichord. As a future piano technician, I think it's important that I know enough about different keyboard instruments to be able to competently tune or repair them. That's my main reason for coming here. Since I have a background in piano and piano tech, I'll be circling back to what I know in that field throughout this video. That being said, I'd love to hear your feedback or additional tips and tricks you have in a comment or message. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the tools needed for tuning. Unlike tuning a piano with the felt strip, stick mutes, and wedge mutes, the only tool you need to tune a harpsichord is a tuning hammer for historical pins. Comparing with my piano hammer, you can see the difference, especially with the tuning tips. I will be using the Clear Tune app for the historical temperaments on it. I'd like to mention that a commonly used app amongst piano tuners is Tune Lab, and while it gives the ability to load a non-equal temperament, the temperament I'm starting with isn't one of the options. You can create your own temperament by manually plugging in offset numbers, but I'm going to stick with Clear Tune. If you have Tune Lab and want to mess with creating a temperament file, I'll comment with a link to a site I found that's given various temperaments and the respective offset numbers. Back to Clear Tune. You're going to want the proper settings before tuning, so make sure A is set to 415 instead of 440 and choose the temperament you want. Since I'm trying to learn all the historical temperaments I can while at Zuckerman, I'm starting from the very beginning and choosing Pythagorean. The harpsichord I will be tuning in this video is the single strung Troubadour Virginal. You'll notice that on some of the tuning pins, red washers are placed over them. These conveniently mark the C's on the keyboard so that one can easily figure out where to place your tuning hammer. If these aren't present on your pins, I have a nice little trick on how to find the tuning pin to the pitch you're wanting to adjust. To find the tuning pin that corresponds with the middle C that I'm playing, I'm going to find the vibrating string for that pitch by lightly touching the tuning hammer over the strings until I find it. From there, I follow the string up to the pin. It's a common mistake for beginners to place their tuning hammers on the incorrect pin, resulting in broken strings while adjusting the wrong pitch. The visual aid on the app will tell you if you need to adjust the pitch sharper or flatter. To make the pitch sharper, turn the hammer clockwise. To make the pitch flatter, turn the hammer counterclockwise. Make sure the hammer is standing straight up while tuning so there's less of a chance of bending the tuning pin. Notice how often I'm repeating the note that I'm adjusting. It is important that you tune around your note repetitions instead of pressing notes after making adjustments. I tune my temperament from C to B using the app. Once I get to the C an octave above from where I started, I will start tuning by octaves instead of the app. After I tune the Cs to each other, I will start going down the keyboard by octaves to tune the bass strings. You want to tune the bass strings first because the treble strings are more susceptible to going out of tune. Tuning the treble strings last will give you better results. Some of you may be asking why I'm not using the app to tune the remainder of the keyboard. Two reasons. My first being that harpsichord overtones are easily picked up by the app, so it can be difficult for your device to pick out the actual pitch you want to tune. My second reason is that the human ear is easily able to listen to the difference between two pitches in an octave, so that you can adjust a pitch to cancel out any beats until it's pure. The first thing I learned when tuning a piano was how to tune unisons. I would practice getting a pure or beatless unison, by adjusting one pitch's string in and out of tune to another string. For those of you who have never tuned an octave before, we can do the same exercise. So we're going to do a little tuning exercise. We're going to do these two Ds. So we already know the lower D is in tune because we used it with the tuning app. So we're going to want to tune the higher D to the lower D. So let me go find the note. There it is. Now we're going to tune it flat. See how terrible that sounds? Now we're going to tune it back to pure. And now we're going to make it sharp. Sounds terrible. Let's tune it back to pure. And you're going to want to do this exercise over and over until your ears are used to hearing a pure octave. 
After tuning the bass and then treble strings, your harpsichord is in tune and ready to be played. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll see you guys in the next. Bye!